Hello, and welcome to the Quiet and Strong podcast, especially for introverts. I'm your host, David Hall, and the creator of QuietAndStrong.com. This podcast is a weekly one dedicated to understanding the strengths and needs of introverts. Introversion is not something to fix, but to be embraced. Normally, we'll air each episode on a Monday. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite platform. Do you use a to-do list? How's it going? I have gone through many phases of to-do lists. And, you know, after a, a period of time, I think I finally have a good system going for me. But at the same time, I've realized as an introvert with many ideas, a don't do list may be just as important. I was having these thoughts as I was looking at this past week, the different things that I need to do. And, you know, honestly, it's more than I can do right now. So I have to think of what I'm going to do and what I might put on a don't do list, so to speak. So over the past few years, I've read numerous books on organization and productivity, and I found some valuable information, and it's a critical part of productivity and time management to be organized. But as an introvert, I first had to understand myself and how I've worked best before I could successfully implement organization tips or systems from somebody else. And you'll hear me say, when it comes to many things, including time management, who better to learn from if you're an introvert than a fellow introvert? So once you've come to understand your own strengths and needs, it becomes easier to tweak other people's systems and ideas to work for you, your individual personality. Of course, introverts have different needs when it comes to time management. We need time to clear our minds quiet focus time for some tasks and projects. We need time to plan, reflect, think, and time to recharge each day to be effective. So there's many products and apps to get organized. I have and I'll continue to experiment. But in the end, the technology to use is what works best for you. I'm in favor of using as few systems as possible and want to be able to access my system anywhere I am online. So what's your favorite app or tool to keep track of what you need to do? I'd love to hear from you. As far as getting organized, I've really benefited from David Allen's book, Getting Things Done. I've enjoyed his ideas on productivity and have incorporated many of these great suggestions to help myself get things done. And because I know my strengths and needs as an introvert, I've been able to use his ideas on organizing workload and create a system that works really well for me, again, as an introvert. So I took the process outlined in Alan's book and used his criteria for dealing with stuff, as he calls it, and applied it to my personal system. So what I use is a Google Sheet to help keep track of everything. I like using this as it's easy to divide up and it's easy to customize information in a way that works for me. I have my projects and major responsibilities listed in the very first tab. And projects are defined as having an end date sometime in the near future and responsibilities are ongoing. I have other sections based on what we're going to review in this podcast today. So do you have a good system? Is everything in one place? If not, this is a good place to start. And sometimes we might need to do a reset. You know, like I said, I'm looking at what I have to get done right now, and it's time for a reset. I need to look at, okay, what has to happen now? What can wait? What can I not do? What can I put on my don't do list? Of course, this can be done anytime and you don't have to wait till January 1st. You know, New Year's is a great time for goals, but we may need to do a reset anytime during the year and as often as we need to. You may have a great system, but over time it can be overrun with too many things and not enough time to do it all. You know, you're 
to do's can, can grow into an impossible amount of things. So from time to time, we need to move some things off and onto the don't do list. So for Alan, this is part of the collection phase, looking at everything that needs to be done. Introverts, find some quiet space to reflect and think about your goals and your priorities and how that will work into an actionable plan with all the do's and some don't do's. For Alan, part of this is collecting physical documents as well as electronic. You know, I was going paperless before March 2020. But since March 2020, I haven't printed much of anything. It's been kind of nice. Being paperless helps keep my space free of clutter. It's good for the environment. And documents are available to all that need them and not just tucked away in one person's filing cabinet. Of course, what you have to have hard copies of will depend on where you work and the type of work you do. So I do know that we're all a little more paperless than we were before. The only paper I use, I keep one spiral notebook by me and I scribble down notes throughout the day as I'm in meetings, have conversations, or have thoughts come to me for many reasons. And then... Ideally, at the end of the day, I transfer these into my my Google Sheet. I use this notebook from front to back till it's done, then I start a new one. And this is something I got better at working from home. You know, I have less space at home, so I had to be more organized and have less clutter. And so, you know, probably back at the office, I took notes in more than one place. But really, having this spiral notebook and then making sure it all gets into my Google Sheet has worked really well for me. My space stays cleaner. So my to-do list is made up from items, from meetings, from projects, conversations. And of course, a lot of what I got to do comes through email. So using Alan's criteria when reviewing each item, either on my to-do list or in my email, I can decide, is it actionable? If no, then do one of the following. Either trash it, add it to a someday maybe list or store it as reference material. So these pieces are all key components of the don't do list. Now, if it is actionable, then I need to decide, should I do it now? Alan has a rule that if it can be done in two minutes or less, then do it now. Or you can delegate it to somebody else. That's a good don't do list item. And then once you do that, putting on a waiting list so you can follow up later. Or maybe, uh, you know, it's something that needs to be done, but not right away. You can defer it and add it to a calendar. We'll talk a little bit more about that with the next action for it. I group my to-dos by my projects that I have and responsibilities. And of course, I have a space for those miscellaneous items. So in my Google Sheet, I have tabs, you know, based on the getting things done system. So mine are called projects where I list my major projects and responsibilities. I have a to do now section for those things that need to be done today. I have a to do for things that need to be done, but you know, there's not really a timeline just soon. I have a follow up section for others and then a maybe section. So my to-do now, these are actionable items that must be done today. And I make an item on my to-do now list. And I'm sure to note, you know, if there is a deadline with anything, either the to-do now or the to-do, you know, it's important to note what those deadlines are. So per day on the to-do now, I really try to limit it to a reasonable number of things I'll actually get accomplished. Usually it's 10 or less for me. Again, you have to figure out what works for you, what size the tasks are, and all that good stuff. But I think you really want to make it that you'll get those things done that you set out to do. And then my to-do tab are things I need to review, but they're not urgent. I do need to do them, but just not today. And then there's a follow-up tab. 
those are things that I gave somebody else to do or questions that I have. You know, I'm waiting for a response. And this can really be a lifesaver. You know, we are all busy and people with the best of intentions can miss something they're supposed to follow up on you with. So it's best to have this section as a backup. And then I have a maybe section. You know, David Allen calls it someday maybe. This is the file for those good ideas that you have, but they're not a current priority. They just really don't fit into your your time. I know that as an introvert, I have lots of ideas, but more than I could ever do. So when I have a good idea, I should capture it. You know, maybe it, it is a good thing, but I just can't do it right now. So I can put it on this maybe list and review later, and maybe the time for that good idea will come later. And then as far as email, I I do file things for reference. This is not in my sheet, but these are emails that I'm done with to file away for just in case I need them for some future purpose. Over the years, I've, I've had lots of different email folders, but I'm trying to move away from that because if you have a program like Gmail where you can search, you really don't have to have multiple folders. You can figure out how to have less and spend less time filing and just maybe have an archive folder. Again, there might be a reason you might want to have specific folders to be able to go through. Figure out what works best for you. Also, on those things that maybe don't need to be done today, but there is a specific day in the future that they should be done, I've made a, a to-do calendar item. It, it appears like, you know, first thing in the morning. I create a to-do on a repeated basis. So it's every morning and I schedule it for months at a time or even a couple of years at a time. And that way, you know, maybe I need to do something on November 1st. And, you know, that's a couple months away. It might be a big thing. It might be a small thing. But that way I'll be sure to do it on that particular day. That's another way I just keep track of the things that need to be done at a certain time. And, you know, it's an item on my calendar. I don't know about you, but I do share my calendar with my colleagues. And these kinds of things may be private. So it's nice you can mark this appointment, so to speak, as private in your calendar. That way, if you don't want other people to see your to-do items, um, they can be private to you. So at the beginning of the day, I take just some time to review the to-do now items and make a plan for the day. I may do this the night before. I'll also review the to-do, the follow-up, and maybe I can review these also at the end of the week to see if anything should be moved to a higher priority or do I need to follow up with somebody. I found that having my tasks all in one place on any device, it works really well. Again, it's up to you, the system you use. But to me, the important thing is to be able to access your system wherever needed and to have everything in one place. So I've adopted ideas for many productivity experts to create workflow systems that work for me. But since everyone's different, you need to understand how you work best to create organizational systems that function well for you, especially as an introvert. I'll probably be forever tweaking my own systems because I'm always thinking and looking for ways to improve and streamline my methods. And I always enjoy learning new ways of organizing and figuring out how to make systems work to my own strengths. I do try to limit distractions while focusing on specific projects. And I try to check email just a few times every day. If I'm looking at my email all day long with a new one popping up every couple minutes, I'll never get anything done. I do want to make sure that I process my email regularly so I don't miss anything urgent that needs my attention. But like I said, a lot of my to-dos come from my email, so it's it's a regular part of my process. So what's important for you to get done? What should you not do in order to accomplish the important? The don't-do list could be having someone else do the task, putting it on a maybe list for later, or just don't do it. If you just don't do it, will someone care? 
Some action steps for you. Identify areas where better organization skills might improve your workflow. Understand your own strengths and weaknesses as you implement strategies to improve your workflow and organizational systems. Find a product or app that will capture your tasks and projects all in one place. And regularly review your to-do items and determine should they be done today or at a later date, delegated to someone else, or saved for some time in the future. And I do this review every day and every week. And then sometimes the longer period where I'm maybe what I called earlier in the show, a reset. And of course, regularly review your deadlines. And then part of that weekly review, look at your non-urgent tasks that you've marked as maybe and see if the time has come for those things. Or maybe it's time just to take them off the list. You're never going to do them. I hope you're getting all the important things done in your life. Again, you need to evaluate from time to time. What do I want to do? Should I be doing this? Or should somebody else be doing this? Or is this something that we can get along without? So I wish you all the best in your to-do and don't-do items. Thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to further connecting with you. Reach out to me at david at quietandstrong.com. Check out the website, quietandstrong.com. Comment on social media related to the show. Leave a review wherever you can. Send me topics or guests you'd like to see on the show. There's so many great things about being an introvert, and we need those to be understood. Get to know your introverted strengths and needs, and be strong.